I was really thrilled when I got in and came to visit and sort of said, yep, this is it. And um, was very happy not to have to leave DC because I had been living here uh, at that time. But also I felt like it was small, but not too small. And it was sort of right in the middle of everything. And I couldn't imagine why you would take a job working on, why you would take, go to school working on foreign policy and not be in the mix. So when I got a job straddling the policy and the field world here in Washington, it sort of seemed incredible to realize that I was literally leaving graduation and putting what I had learned into practice like three weeks later. <laughs> My memory is of really working and loving the work and sometimes sitting, I used to sit for like six to eight hours sometimes writing my essays and I remember just sitting there and fully enjoying for maybe the first time in my life being totally immersed in work and I think it was in part because I was ready, you know, developmentally finally to do it but also because I knew that this was the path that I was going to be on for the rest of my life and these were the, you know, this was the foundation and I think that was, it was really exciting for me. The late Princeton Lyman um, was also a tremendous mentor. He gave me the best advice I've ever gotten, um, which I think is particularly relevant for young women. When you get to the room for the meeting, don't sit in the back, sit at the table. If you're going to sit at the table, don't just have something to say, have something good to say. And I have sworn by that my whole professional career. I remember when I started at MSFS, people would say, oh, you know, the people you meet here are going to be the most important people going forward. And then years later, you're going to value them. And I sort of thought, yeah, yeah, whatever. But in fact, we were in the trenches together. So there is a common understanding between everybody that I graduated with, and probably the year ahead and the year below as well. And that maybe has been the most unexpected. Like, it really is true. I can, you know, call up so-and-so I haven't talked to in 10 years or send them an email and say, hey, can you help me with this? By the way, how are you? And it's lovely. There's just that basic fundamental trust because we experience the same things. Even though it's a small program, there is this legacy and this history. And there's a lot of pride. And Like I was in a meeting yesterday at the State Department and the Assistant Secretary and a new ambassador and a guy sitting next to me said, oh, well, we'll let him go first because he's a Hoya. And I thought, wait, I'm a Hoya too. And everyone's like, oh wait, oh gosh, who goes first? So there was a certain measure of pride. <laughs>